one of the things I did upon becoming scientific director was to create a named lectureship uh, to honor Jeff's contributions to NHGRI and NIH. And this is the annual Jeffrey Trent Lecture in Cancer Research. And as you can see, we have brought four and then today a fifth very distinguished speaker to come and give that lecture. And uh, part of our reasons for doing this is to make sure we get Jeff to come back to campus once a year to visit. And so he is here today and I asked him to just make a few remarks before Francis Collins introduces uh, the Jeffrey Trent Lecture of this year. Jeff. Yeah. Uh, thank you. For, uh, in the shadow of the Capitol, I'm reminded of the comment from the Arizona statesman for many, many years, Mo Udall, in a similar situation, he said, well, uh, everything has already been said, not everyone has already said it. And that's uh, certainly my responsibility today. So I have uh, actually three things to say, which I hope haven't been said maybe in exactly the same words. Uh, Dr. Zerhouni, delighted that you're here. I want to really say for all of you that are part of this NIH family that it is the most remarkable biomedical research institute in the world. I hope that those of you that have your home here will indeed not take it for granted. It is a gift to mankind, to science, and we're delighted uh, for your efforts on our behalf. The next, the next is I want you to realize just how much Francis and myself really contributed to the foundation and the formation and certainly the operationalization of NISC, which is just essentially almost zero. Uh, really, this is an Eric Green uh, compliment to his tenacity, and he was tenacious. He was, I, I didn't even have to go ask for funding. I just sent him after Jim Batty and the others that really jumped into this uh, to just get away from Eric, and it was just an incredible <laughs> tribute uh, to Eric and really, I think, very little to anyone else. And finally, again, my great uh, uh, honor to be uh, so honored uh, during my lifetime, not posthumously, in this lecture by NHGRI, and I thank uh, Eric for his willingness to give it as well. So thank you very much. Well, what a wonderful day it has been here, and it ain't over yet uh, because uh, Eric Green is not the only Eric with a lot of energy in this audience, in this room, so you're going to hear, I'm sure, uh, some very exciting and inspiring words in a moment uh, from Eric Lander, who I have the privilege of introducing. It has been a great day to be able to celebrate NISC and its 10 years of remarkable scientific achievements, uh, to celebrate Eric Green and his leadership, to celebrate all the members of NISC who have been here during the day and who have made all this possible, to have this wonderful lineup of presenters. I mean, what an amazing uh, set of presentations have been folded into this uh, day uh, of science. And thank you to all of you uh, for coming and giving us uh, such interesting and inspiring presentations. And also to celebrate Jeff Trent uh, as the person who got this scientific uh, intramural program in genomics uh, up and going. And it's wonderful to have him here and to have this lecture, uh, which is uh, named after his uh, contribution to this place, which has really been remarkable. So what do you say about a guy named Eric Lander? His CV is the stuff of legend. It is, after all, whispered in the hallways, the ways in which uh, he came up out of a rather unlikely pathway uh, to be, in, a, in many ways, uh, the intellectual centerpiece of what has been going on in genomics for quite some time. Eric, as you probably know, because it is the stuff of legend, actually got his PhD in mathematics as a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, went on uh, to become a uh, professor at Harvard uh, teaching business negotiation. And let me say, as to having been on the receiving end, <laughs> that that's probably the best possible preparation to be a Genome Center director. <laughs> and it gives the genome staff uh, quite a lot of challenges to try to keep up with the logic, which, you know, when he's telling you about why he needs another $20 million by next week, it all sounds so plausible. And then you <laughs> walk away and you go, no, wait a minute, I think I just got landered which is, after all, the verb that his own uh, group uses to describe what happens after you've been in a conversation with Eric and suddenly you've changed your life plan. Well, you've been landered. So, uh, yeah, Eric has been innovative. Uh, he has been disruptive uh, in good ways. Uh, when we were trying to get the mapping of the uh, human genome done, uh, he put together uh, various automated approaches to that that hadn't previously been assembled. There was the Genomatron, if you happen to visit the Whitehead Genome Center back in the mid-1990s. 
there was this an amazing contraption that took up half a room and all these robots and uh, conveyor belts. But I learned later on that they only turned it on for visitors. <laughs> And the rest of the time, there was a lot of people behind the wall with pipette men, but <laughs> I guess that's part of business negotiation training. <clears throat> so um, after that, of course, deciding that uh, the Whitehead Institute for Genome Research, which he had founded, was just getting a little too small, uh, Eric has gone on uh, to be the founder of a truly remarkable institution, uh, the Eli and Edith Broad Institute in Boston, which is affiliated with both Harvard and MIT. And many people predicted that Harvard and MIT would never be co-affiliated with anything. So that in its own right is an achievement, again, coming back to that business negotiation thing. Now Eric, uh, in the process of putting that together, has assembled a truly remarkable group of young scientists. And any of you have the chance to go and visit with some of those people, say hello to Eric, but go talk to the young people in his, his facility. You will be truly amazed and inspired by what this next generation is coming up with in terms of genomic applications to almost every problem in biology and medicine that you can think of. And so uh, it is truly a delight to have the chance to have him here to give our Trent lecture. But you know, I don't feel like I've quite done justice to this introduction. I, I, I feel a song coming on. <laughs> Thank you, sir. If I'd have told Eric Green this ahead of time, he would have told me I couldn't do it, so. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. Well, you know, he is the king, and you know what his institute is called. Warehouse for sale or rent, look at all the dough he spent. MIT seemed oh so fine, but that was so 1999. So then Eric mustered all his charm, and he took that Eli guy by storm. He's a man of means by all means, king of the broad. Eric now, he just can't wait to disrupt and innovate. If 10 machines would do, Eric must have 32. When he needed help to do his thing, he landed anyone or anything. He's a man of means by all means, king of the broad. Well, he started with maps and the genomatron. We just looked around, the whole thing was gone. The sequencing machines went into overdrive because Eric had to be the best of the G5. He did. So I say, now he's into other stuff. DNA is not enough. Protein networks, they're so cool. And don't forget small molecules. So now Eric, before the time is spent, Give the lecture name for Trent. You're a man of means by all means. King of the birds. I give you Dr. Landry.